to art class with Miss Chris. Well, we're gonna spend the beginning of our school year and however long this virtual goes, goes, and I'm going to make weekly videos for you. Each week, you're gonna be learning something different and a variety of different things. But I wanted to start our art class off with some shading and pencil work. Um, I really like these pencils. These are called Ebony Prisma pencils. And this lead gets super dark. And it's really, really, really incredible for shading. Also, I have a blending stick, kind of looks like this. And this helps you blend the graphite pencil to create all different kinds of effects. You'll also need a pencil sharpener. You're actually gonna be sharpening your pencil quite a bit. Um, an eraser, any type of eraser you have. And I do like to have a just a number two drawing pencil around. This is really easy to erase and the lead is really light. See, if it says 2B, it, as it goes up, like 2B, 3B, 4B, 5B, 6B, you get a variety of different um, strengths in the lead. So 2, 2B is very light. And this ebony, I don't even think it has exactly what it is, but I would give this pencil a 6B or an 8B. Um, you can get super dark, even almost black with it. So those are the materials that we're gonna use today. If you don't have a blending stick, don't worry about it. Um, you can also use your finger. The oils in your finger, finger help shade as well, but these just make it really nice. So I do recommend getting these in your future if you like drawing with pencil. All right, so we're gonna start our unit off. Uh, unit one, we're gonna look at some artists. And our first artist is going to be um, a photographer that I just admire. I've admired his work my whole life. He is a landscape photographer. Uh, his name is Ansel Adams. Um, all his work is in black and white. And he was alive. He, he was actually born in 1902 and he lived to 1984. And he created some of the most beautiful images of our natural world. Um, he loved national parks such as Yosemite and he, Joshua Tree. He would go to our national parks and just observe and take pictures um, and develop them develop them. Oh, quite different than the way we develop things now. His was all in dark rooms and took hours and hours and hours. So he was passionate about what he did. And so I do want to show you this piece really quick because this piece right here is one of his photography of a tree, an oak tree. And we are going to make an oak tree today. Um, we don't, we're, I'm not going to copy this exactly, but I'm going to be inspired by this piece. Um, so anyways, let's get started with that. Here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get that just regular number two pencil and I'm going to make a horizon line. Now the horizon line is where the earth and the land meet and it's going to be right in here. And this is going to be just a line that kind of goes through your paper. Okay. Now this is where the land is and this is where our background is. And our tree is going to grow straight up through the land. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the basis of my tree. So I'm just going to get this 2B and I'm going to start in the land towards the middle of the paper would be great. And I'm just gonna start by coming up through the trunk. This is gonna be the trunk of our tree. And this trunk is gonna go straight up. As it goes up into space, it is going to get skinnier and skinnier. We're just gonna kinda curve it and wind it and stop. Okay, see how it kind of got skinnier as, when, as it went up? And it doesn't really look like a tree now, but bear with me, we'll get it there. 
So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add on this trunk. Kind of looks like a flame right now, but we'll, we'll, we'll get it to look like a tree. So I'm gonna come right here. I'm gonna start once again at the bottom. I'm gonna come up a little bit. Right here, I'm gonna curve. I'm gonna make a curve. That's gonna be the top of my tree. I'm gonna curve, and I don't really have a plan right now, but I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna come over like that, and then I'm gonna come back. Come back right here, and I'm gonna come out. And watch what I do right now. I'm gonna take this line, and I'm going to branch it a different way. So we have kind of like a shape like that. Now, I'm gonna come over, back over here, and I'm gonna come this way, and I'm gonna come this way, and now you see how I'm creating branches. Now, I'm just gonna play with this for a little bit. I'm gonna just come over here, and as the branches move out to the end of the tree, they get skinnier and skinnier, and that's just the way trees work. So I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna get skinnier and skinnier. So there's my two first branches. Now, what I wanna do right now is spend a little time to make lots of smaller branches on these branches. So I'm gonna come out and I'm just going to, and you can just take your time. And the thing that's nice about these YouTube videos is you can always stop, you know, work on a piece for a little bit, press play again when you want to come back to where I left off. It makes it really easy for you to make a piece. I mean, even if you did a bunch one day, and you could see how I'm making little branches now, you can come back. You can come back the next day and continue where you left off. Um, when you take this art class, um, which I'm posting on YouTube, subscribe to my channel. And that way you're gonna get alerts every time I post a YouTube video. And for the purposes of this art class, it's gonna be every Monday, but, um, it's, but as you're gonna see when you subscribe to my channel, I have a lot of different YouTube um, drawing tutorials already up there, and you can grab onto any of those. Say you get done with this tree really quick, you can get on that YouTube and do something that maybe you haven't done before. There's Volkswagen buses, sharks, um, sun and moon designs. Some of them, because you guys are middle schoolers, some of the pro, some of them are for very young kids. So I mean, they, they they could be for your siblings, younger siblings. But for you guys, I would stick with uh, the more advanced projects like this. So, all right. So do you see how I have come off these branches and made smaller branches? It's actually kind of fun. And I don't really, as I said, I don't really have a plan. I'm just, I'm just coming right off, going forward, making littler branches. And I think I'm going to stop right about there. All right. Now I'm going to come on the other side and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start lower and I'm going to work myself up to the top. So I'm going to go a little higher this time because nature is not perfect. And that's the most beautiful thing about it. It's not, there's no rhyme or reason. Every tree, even the same type of tree, grows differently. So here we go. I'm going to come up here. And once again, what did I do? Thicker to thinner. Oh, here comes my cat. Hello. This is uh, my cat named Stevie. We got her quarantine cat. Maybe some of you got quarantine pets as well, but uh, I did. So... I'm going to continue on and I'm going to come down and if you watch some of my other videos I have um, my other cat that likes to sneak on them makes little visits every once in a while <laughs> so here we go thicker to thinner okay I'm just making branches branches off branches and they're not straight you know what I mean? They're not straight lines. Branches curve and twist. Here goes my smaller branches. My little smaller branches. Trees are actually really fun to draw. There's lots of different types of trees. Okay, here I go. Smaller branches. So 
I'm actually gonna move to my Prisma color because I have a really good flow right now and I am gonna start, you can see, watch, look how dark. Look how dark I can get that lead. It's so dark, I love it. So I'm gonna come up now and I'm gonna start working higher branches. And um, I'm inspired by Ansel Adams, but I'm making this my own. I think it's really fun to be inspired by other artists and other types of art. Art is really fun to look at. Like if you like Ansel Adams and you like photography, I think you should go on YouTube or just Google, look up his work, check it out. Um, another really cool thing about Ansel Adams is as you grow older and you start um, traveling more, living in cities, there are Ansel Adam art shows that move, move around our country where you can go someday and see his work and be inspired by it. And some of you that are listening today may already really love making photography. It's really fun. It's very different now than the way he used to make it. But um, Ansel Adams, actually, he started making photography when he was a young teenager. His um, parents, um, he's from San Francisco, his parents would take him to the um, Yosemite Valley, which is not too far from San Francisco, about four hours, and he loved it, and his dad gave him a camera. And he literally fell in love with the camera and just started becoming a photographer. He went back year after year and started taking pictures. So that's a really great thing about growing up is you never know when that one thing is gonna be given to you that changes your life forever. Another, I wanted, I know I'm talking a lot about Ansel Adams, but I've been reading about him. And another thing I thought was really interesting about him is he was a young child during the Spanish flu. And the Spanish flu is compared to what we're going through now, all of us, um, our coronavirus. It is, it was in 1918, it was a, the coronavirus of now, and he got it as a child. He got that Spanish flu and um, he survived and his family survived it. And I was reading that when he was having a hard time, it was taking him a long time to feel better. And one thing that his parents did because he loved nature so much um, that they took him to Yosemite to help him heal. The fresh air, um, the peace that he, he, he felt as a child there and it helped him. He actually um, survived and got over it. So, you know, that was really inspiring to me that he also, you know, went through this time when he was a child and got through it just like we're all gonna get through it just fine as well. All right, so there we go. I have kind of a general cool tree with lots of little branches. That takes a little time. But what I'm gonna do now, and I'm gonna go as fast as I can because I don't wanna bore you. I'm gonna go in and I want you to watch. I'm gonna go in as fast as I can. I may have to sharpen at some point, but I'm gonna go in. Look how dark that gets. It's so fun. I'm just gonna go in now and fill in my tree. Super dark. I'm pushing down really hard. And the nice thing about the whole thing with shading and using pencils is the harder you push down with a pencil, the darker it gets. And I'm going like, I'm going almost as dark as I can get this Prisma pencil, which is almost black right now. But as you can see, look, I just ate that lead right up. So this is why I want you guys to have that pencil sharpener so you can go in here and Perfect, ah, back to work. Okay, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna darken it up and I'm going fast. You don't have to go this fast, I'm rushing. Um, I don't want you to rush when you make it. I might even add a few more of those little branches as I go, They're really fun to add. See, the thing with making art, and I really want you to think about this when you're making art, you don't need to be stressed about it. 
okay? There's no judgment. I just want you to relax and have fun and do your best. And if you mess up or it's not perfect, who cares? I don't care. I'm just happy that you're, um, you're doing this right now. Okay, so I'm going, I'm trying to get this done because I have one more technique I really wanna share with you that's really fun with that blending stick because I just, I just love the blending stick. I really, really recommend you guys get one of those things. Actually, they come in a package of like five and they wear out pretty fast. But they're not too expensive and I think they're essential with drawing with a pencil. All right, I'm just darkening some of my lines, going through as fast as I can. I mean, I used the number two pencil when I did this just to start me out because it is really hard to erase this um, ebony pencil because that lead is so dark. You can literally, you can't erase it. It'll always be there. All right, so now you see that I have the basis of that tree. Um, I'm also, and I'm not gonna do it right now because it takes a while, but I'm also gonna make this whole area right here black. I am gonna add the sun right here. I want the sun to kind of peek out like it's rising from that horizon line. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to try a new technique. I'm gonna take that ebony pencil and I, I'm gonna give it a little quick sharpen. You're gonna go through these pencils fast so they come in packages. It might be smart just to get a big package of them. So I'm gonna take this ebony pencil and I'm gonna use the side of it now, okay? And I'm just gonna be really loose about it. And I'm gonna, I'm going really fast and I'm gonna go through all of my little branches, okay? Not my big, not, not in the middle of the big branch. Just those small little branches. See what I'm doing? I'm going really kind of back and forth, zigzag, kind of crazy. It's a back and forth and I'm just working myself. Around my tree, back and forth. You can always, see how I just did that, I blew? You can always blow that lead off because it gets messy. And your hands, their hands after you do a, a pencil drawing, especially with this kind of ebony lead, your hands are gonna be really dirty. Um, so you're gonna need to give them a good wash after. All right, so I am just working myself through, um, going back and forth. And your drawing does not need to look like mine, by the way. Just have it look however it turns out. Um, please share with me too. Like I'm gonna start our discussion boards this week and I'm gonna post a picture of one that I already did. Um, and then I want some of you that feel comfortable post pictures of the ones that you do when we got out of school in March, I started this and it was actually really positive and really fun um, to support each other. Being, being positive right now and supporting one another um, with good, good energy is just the, a way that we can all make each other feel good. And art, art feels, art is fun. Just realize that, art is fun. Okay, so see how I did that? Now watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab the blending stick and I'm gonna come through my piece and I am gonna go right over all that work. See how I'm going over it? So what the blending stick does is it takes the pencil and it smears it. So you get lighter, I'm gonna use the word value, okay? Not like money value, but value in art is the variety of lights and darks that you get 
from shading. Um, so that would be black value, and that would be like a soft value, a midtone. So that's a good word to keep in your art vocabulary, value. So if you ever go see an Ansel Adams uh, photography show, you can be like, oh, I love the way he uses the values in that piece of work. Alrighty, so as you can see, it's actually really fun. Now, if you don't have a blending stick, because no, you'd have to order one, takes a little time. Uh, you can use your fingers. Um, the um, oil in your fingers also blends out the pencil. Okay, so now I'm gonna do something crazy. I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna rub my hand all through this piece. This is where you're gonna need to wash your hands after you're done with this because art is a messy thing. Maybe that's why I like it so much. So that is just creating a nice kind of shade behind this piece of work. Okay, Woo, I'm going all over the place, sorry. <laughs> all right, so um, I am gonna clean it up a little bit because there's a few things that I see that are a little messy. Not that art needs to be perfect because it really doesn't. It's, it's actually, it's nice to see your work and your energy in a piece. It really is. So I am going to come over here because I kind of want, like, I'm using the side of my pencil again. And I'm going to come just right here at the bottom. I'm going to add a little, a little bit, a little bit darker value right here at the bottom. Kind of like the morning sunrise. This is in black and white where it kind of has different colors as that sun comes up. It starts brightening up our earth. I love sunrises. I mean, I don't see them that often because I like to sleep in, but man, they're pretty. But here's another thing, and I'm, I know I'm talking a lot today, but as you, um, as you work on top, see, I brush my hand and I have all this light value back here, but as I add to it, it just builds it, it builds it up, builds up the tone. So I'm gonna show you this because this one I did a while ago. I actually did it the opposite direction, but I do want you at the bottom to fill all this in with like a really dark um, value or pencil. Just really go hard down here to create that almost silhouette, the outline of our piece. So here we go. First piece, have fun. Work on making this oak tree based on, here it is, an Ansel Adam photography piece. And enjoy the process. And then we're gonna meet again in a week and we're gonna do something completely different. Each week will be completely different. So next week, um, we're gonna do a Picasso, which we're gonna add some color to. So have a great week. Enjoy your uh, art making process. Get dirty. Like, see my hand? Go for it. Get dirty, and I'll, um, I'll see you next week. Take care.